हेलो गुड मॉर्निंग सर गुड मॉर्निंग आई एम पवन सिंह फ्रॉम एमडीआई गुड़गांव एम आई ऑडिबल एम आई विजिबल यस सर यू आर ऑडिबल एंड यू आर विजिबल टू दैट्स फैंटास्टिक आई थिंक मैडम श्वेता चौधरी जी नमस्कार गुड मॉर्निंग यस सर वेरी गुड मॉर्निंग गुड मॉर्निंग यस सर आई एम श्वेता गुड गुड मॉर्निंग गुड मॉर्निंग जी नमस्कार योर फेचर डिपार्टमेंट डॉक्टर श्वेता यस So, Dr. Shweta ji is also faculty okay. there. Yes, sir. In which subject? Pooja, ma'am, is my colleague, sir. Yes, sir. All right. Nice. So, please arrange yourself. I am ready. Sir, one, okay. Sir, one thing I would like to ask you. Sure. Uh, sir, uh, for question answer session, what should we do? Should we take the questions at the uh, in the last session, in last ten minutes or uh, in between? Acha, what is the total time duration? That is sixty minutes. Yes, sir. Total time duration is sixty minutes. So I propose that uh, better question can come in the last. Okay, sir. So yes. next uh, in the last ten minutes we will take up the question. I think um, I will have to manage myself. Uh, I should complete okay. within. Of course, topic is very big, but if I give you fifteen minutes. or even 20 okay. minutes for question answer i think that will be most ideal so let us go okay, by sir. this scheme 45 plus 15 is it okay 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 sir as soon as you will complete your uh, session we will start the question answer answer Perfect. session yes yes okay so good morning one and all present here in this session i dr shweta on behalf of uh, international school of management patna welcome all the participants in this expert talk as the part of faculty development program our today's topic is effective teaching pedagogy and our today's eminent speaker is dr pavan kumar singh sir who is currently designated as director of mdi gurgaon he has also served as director in charge of i am indore and has served as a sheet anchor in the role of a mentor at i am sambalpur and also remained the chairperson of academic committee of i am sarpur he has published numerous research papers two books one book in the field of people management in addition to being on the editorial boards of reputed journals he has presented about 75 research papers in several national and international seminars both in and out of india there is lot more to say ab about uh, dr pavan kumar singh sir but due to time constraint i am limiting myself and i along with my colleague ms pooja ma'am uh, welcome dr pavan kumar singh sir in this session welcome you sir madam shweta ji namaskar thank you very much uh, on this screen uh, All participants' names, title, etc., are not visible. But let me know. I am asking Madam uh, Shweta Ji. Let me know that uh, whether audience have joined. I do not know. Yes, sir. Everybody have joined. You can start. Okay. And 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 how many? Uh, they are all faculty. Who are who are the audience? Please let me know. Let me. Yes, have sir. Check. Audience are the faculty members. Faculty. Are, are there um, uh, some research scholars also? Yes, sir. some research scholars academicians that's fantastic and may i know the number how many may be around sir it's around 350 to 400 participants are registered pardon the 350 to 400 participants are registered in this particular session oh that's fantastic sir and everybody is on uh, our program is on facebook also that is live so everybody right. is uh, there okay and uh, whether students of pg level or bba level also there some of the students are also there but maximum number you can expect of uh, faculties no, and no uh, scholars uh, because they, when the gathering is exclusive um, exclusively for teachers uh, sometimes i become more frank and yes, when the students are there i will remain in my own dignity that is a different thing anyway so uh, let me say that uh, uh, thank you very much uh, international school of management patna thank you very much and a special thanks to Uh, madam pooja dube ji uh, she knew me when she was in indore and yes. i was also in indore uh, till october 2019 and there we had met in certain conferences or on certain academic platforms 
and then uh, madam puja contacted me and uh, asked for having an interaction and i am highly thankful to international school of management patna for giving me this opportunity to meet with you all this is very interesting topic and um, uh, since last uh, 31 years i am in academics but i never claim that i go to teach i always say to myself i am going to a classroom for generating an environment of mutual learning and if somebody learns through my discussion uh, that is a bonus point for him or her but if i learn that is the basic thing basic objective for going into the class so <clears throat> first of all let me pray that um, each one of you each one of your um, own kith and kin known and unknown all be healthy cheerful and creative in this uh, testing time uh, i do not say it is a bad time or it is a uh, it, it, it is unpleasant time it is a different time and this time is teaching us also many subtle lessons and we should not uh, miss those lessons because you see uh, topic here is effective teaching pedagogy i am coming direct to it because time is too limited uh, effective teaching pedagogy and uh, before i use teaching pedagogy to become effective teacher as a teacher i must be a good learner first so being a good learner is the required and uh, corona is also teaching and uh, we are learning two learning i would like to share with you what it it is teaching of course vedanta al already was teaching vedantic philo philosophy and literature first one is that that any any joy which is more at subtler level is more deeper and so called joy at more grosser level is shallow in sanskrit there is a word called deha dhyas deha dhyas means attached too much to body deh pe hi deh mein hi sukh khojna deha dhyas so we become deha dhyasi we become too much attached to body corona is saying please love your loved ones have affection for them wish well for them but with a distance because joy is not basically in physical proximity joy is in more in emotional proximity and spiritual proximity this is the first lesson i learned from corona ki deh ke sukh se upar utho second learning from corona as a teacher because before i become a teacher i have to be learn and second lesson it is teaching which is very important that corona is underlining the importance of understanding about what is necessary and what is unnecessary just let us say before corona we were in a lost world we think now that pre corona world was much pleasant much better we used to meet together we used to throw party for each other we used to go to mall all things are there but you see we were lost into a world where we have we were not applying the wisdom we were running so fast that we were not standing and looking around and wondering over what is necessary and what is unnecessary in life my understanding says that when your maturity level is bit lower still you start understanding what is necessary but when you mature to a higher level of degree you also start understanding what is unnecessary and corona is whispering in your ears it is subtly giving indications what are necessary for your for you in this life and what are not so necessary what are completely unnecessary so anyway thank you very much i will i will proceed further and uh, i am not using any in any kind of slide because you see all these are time taking things and any sometime i would like to come to ism patna if uh, time permits uh, but post corona of course uh, and uh, uh, then we will have some elaborate discussion and here my purpose is to just ignite some thoughts some ideas so no powerpoint nothing i am using though i have prepared but still topic is effective teaching pedagogy out of my 31 years of experience of teaching and about 20 years of experience of being a student because maybe 10 uh, i had done matriculation 11 years so 11 plus 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus 4 is my qualification 
11 years for matriculation, two for intermediate, two for graduation honors, two for master degree, two for second master degree, and four for PhD. So much experience being a student, and so much experience now being a teacher. Based on that, I would like to discuss certain basic understanding. And uh, then you are free to uh, ask question in the last 15 minutes or so. Effective teaching pedagogy, when I say, I humbly say to you, and especially to young teachers, that good teachers, good teachers are available around. This is my personal feeling. I may be wrong and pardon me for this statement. And I am responsible for this statement. Good teachers are available. They are around us. But excellent teachers are few and far between. And we have to move. We have to move from a stage of being a good teacher to very good teacher, to excellent teacher, to outstanding teacher. But I beg pardon for one thing. I'm myself not excellent teacher, but still <laughs> giving you a lecture on how to become effective uh, and excellent teacher. So pardon me for that point. But our journey has to be from good to excellence. And in my understanding, I have seen hundreds of teachers teaching me. I have seen many colleagues, very good colleagues, good teachers. But excellent teachers are few and far between. अंग्रेजी में इस फ्रेज का अर्थ होता है वो कम है और जो लोग हैं उनके बीच की दूरी बहुत ज्यादा होती है पांच पांच सौ माइल पर एक एक एक्सेलेंट टीचर मिलेंगे उसी को कहते हैं फ्यू एंड फार बिटवीन एंड हाउ टू बिकम इफेक्टिव एंड स्पेशली आई वुड कीप इन माइंड दैट टू हूम आई एम एड्रेसिंग आई एम एड्रेसिंग स्पेशली टू फैकल्टी टू टीचर्स हु आर टीचिंग एट हायर लेवल ऑफ एजुकेशन एटलीस्ट ग्रेजुएशन और पोस्ट ग्रेजुएशन or research level of course teaching at the school level is different ball game and all let us say excellent professors who bring laurel as a teacher to themselves in universities may not be good teacher if they are sent to school because is school teaching and in that context being becoming effective is a different ball game because of one's basic reason to be a very good A school teacher. Let me say, though most of us are not here, school teachers. A very good school teacher should be the concept personified. Means the way the, the the moment he or she stands in the classroom and starts deliberating on a, on a subject, a students of class four, five, six, seven should see that concept is flowing inside the body of the teacher, because teacher is. concept or the idea or the theory that you are studying or theorem that you are studying personified uske vyaktitva mein wo sara ka sara vishay vastu jhalak raha hai this i think has to be the first point if we are starting a journey to become very effective teacher in a school context but in college context in university context institute context let me tell you one thing you should be a storehouse of knowledge and first of all conceptual clarity should be inside but you have to wait w a i t wait you have to wait before you start putting wait now here wait is w e i g h t you have to wait before putting your weight on the subject because you want to bring a student at the center of the discussion though you as a professor know the subject but still you are not in hurry to clarify you are basically bringing the student either all the students or one by one or a single student in that context i'm saying at the center of the whole discussion and that's why it is said that in higher education the teaching is participant centered in the schools also when you are teaching at class 10th 11th at higher level of schooling i would say to such teachers that they should slowly start moving towards participant centered teaching 
pedagogy. It may not be possible to that extent when you are teaching class two, class three level in the school, but necessarily at college level in ISM Patna, we need to we need to generate a wave towards participant centered teaching pedagogy. In Hindi, I'll say, "Aap ki vidyarthi raja aur rani hain." Wo beech mein rahenge. They will be in the middle. and you are a grand facilitator you are at the top of your knowledge the students do not know as much as you fine and that that's why you are in the classroom that gives you eligibility to be in the classroom because you are at a different level of understanding of the subject otherwise the students cannot understand from internet teachers are not needed but why you are needed if i i, I get some time i will emphasize for 2 minutes on this point only that in this tech savvy environment why a physical body carrying teacher is needed in the classroom i will discuss but if time permits but here i would like to say please bring your student at the center you be at the periphery don't try to prove that you are the most smart in the class that you are at maturity matured level of teaching we have nothing to prove that i am so excel wait wait w i t wait before putting your weight that is w e i g s t on the subject and this i call as extraction extraction oriented pedagogy you see i will give you two words here manufacturing style of teaching and other is excavating style style of teaching just take take example of two industries one is coal mining and one is steel industry in the steel industry what happens there is a big blast furnace and feldspar iron ore and coking coal and its own process of metallurgy and through that process we convert the raw material the iron ore to iron steel this is manufacturing plant suppose you take example of coal industry coal india limited or other private ones we are not into the business of manufacturing coal coal is being manufactured by nature in thousands and thousands and millions of years the geology of the earth is working to produce coal you are not producing coal but you are excavating coal so the steel industry manufactured coal industry excavating in the classroom as a teacher forget about manufacturing first what is manufacturing style of teaching that you have studied well you know the subject you have come prepared you are thread very clear in your concept your communication skills is par excellence you are fantastic teacher that's good but still i would say if you are dealing with the students at higher level of education graduation post graduation phd don't go by manufacturing process go by excavating process excavate nikaliye pehle bachcho se first of all try to know what they know and then come to their level and then make a journey together with the students towards a higher level of understanding let me tell you again the same thing through different example i say that there are two types of teachers one is top hill teacher is standing at the top of the hill and from there shouting to the students who are at the down hill hey come here come here come here come to my level of understanding this is top hill teacher and other is downhill teacher down is the teacher is one who is at the top of knowledge is standing at the, at the top of the hill but goes down the hill himself or herself takes the students along with himself or herself and then makes a co journey journey together from the downhill to the top of the hill this is co journey and this is downhill teaching style i would suggest think don't take anything what i'm saying as verbatim think and shift i would suggest you to shift from top hill teacher style to downhill teacher style from top hill counseling style to downhill counseling counseling style and that's why my first point that i'm emphasizing is that make your teaching participant centered and for that what are needed 
I think ISM Patna or any good business school must have already been doing. Not that I will say and they will start doing. Whatever, suppose one session that I'm going to take as a teacher, what is the subject matter? What is that one chapter from a textbook will help understanding that subject matter in that session? One chapter from at least one textbook, what is that? What is that one case which if needed for that session, which need to be discussed, highlighted in that session? And what is that one research article or recent cutting from a, a standard newspaper about some business story? Two, three things for each session. What is that one textbook chapter? What is that one research article? What is that one caselet or maybe case will be discussed in that class? These all three should be pre-supplied before the session starts students must have access and system must tell them that hey for this session these are the basic material only basic not that uh, discussion should be confined only to those that is only a jumping board and when as a swimmer you take the help of jumping board jumping board is not the swimming pool that helps you to dive better in the swimming pool so these three study material they are not the end of the learning in that session these three are telling the story of the beginning of the learning in that session. And as you know, in any, in any Hindi film, a hero, when fights with villain, he also throws one weapon towards, <laughs> I'm not saying that teachers are hero and students are villain. <laughs> Don't take unnecessary analogy. But see, in films, you see that hero throws one sword, a kalwar fake data, towards the villain and says, oh, you also hold a sword. I also a sword. Let us fight at the equal ground. Similarly, teachers and students at higher level of education should interact at equal level. So a student should be supplied with those material or at least told about those material. You come prepared. Teacher should say or system should say to students, please, you come prepared. And as a teacher, I will come prepare also. And let, let there be moment. Because just going and teaching will not work at higher level. There are two types of teaching again, I'll say. One is called, one will be called as informing the uninformed. And second, mm -hmm. informing the, informing to the informed. Informing to the uninformed. Now, informing the uninformed is a, of course, different level of challenge. And especially in junior school level, if you are a fantastic assimilator, disseminator, very good. But if in institutes like ISM, you as a teacher claim, I know my subject, I know how to express my subject, my students say that I am a very effective communicator. And once they attend my class at the end of the class, the students are clear about that theme for the whole life. So I'm a good teacher. Then I'll say, my dear sisters and brothers, wait. You are, of course, excellent deliverer. But at that level, you are a good teacher only when you take a step back and allow students to take center stage. Because you have not to prove that you are a hero or heroine. You have to make your students heroes and heroines. That is the point I'm making. So point number one, where I covered participant-centered teaching, which says that keep students at the center, give them material, come prepared, or satsang level that's the point number one. Second thing I will say, just chalte chalte, that um, uh, the topic itself says effective teaching pedagogy. But remember, pedagogy means gogi, pedagogy. Peda means children. That's why pediatrician, a doctor who is specialized in child's affairs, children's affairs, 
they, 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 they are called pediatrician, pedagogy. Peda means children. Gogi means the art of disseminating of teaching. So pedagogy means way of disseminating teaching to children. So term itself is wrong, <laughs> technically. But um, in common parlance, we keep using pedagogy in ISM, pedagogy in MBI, pedagogy in IIT. But actually, it should be pedagogy in a school and andragogy in institutes. Because andra means A-N-D-R-A, -A, andra means adult. And again, gogi means art of disseminating teaching. So andragogy. Basically, we should deal with andragogy. So technically, our topic itself is faulty. Though it was suggested by me, and purpose was just, was just to tell you at this moment that topic is faulty. <laughs> because we have to deal with andragogy and technically speaking, technically speaking, not pedagogy. Pedagogy for children, teaching very young minds and matured minds when you are teaching, it may be called as, it, it is called as andragogy. So point number one, participant centered learning. Second point, I think you have decided to listen to, to have this session and have discussion for a purpose we want to be, or I want to be, let us say in singular term, first person, I want to be effective teacher. Remember a few points within this point, point number one, you can be effective only in your way. You can be effective only in your way. You can learn from many other teachers, observing them, watching them, understanding them, drinking them. Because, you know, in the school days when we had good teachers in the school, I would say that uh, the desire was that to drink that teacher. So, for learning purpose, drink a teacher. But the point that I'm making is never imitate them. You can be effective teacher in your own way only. Some person can be effective teacher. If by nature he or she speaks less, by nature, and through that you can become an effective teacher. You speak only relevant points, speak less, use your body language, allow other students to speak. Some teachers, because teacher is a teacher, but before being a teacher, one is an individual. And his or her tendency is to speak a bit more. Though the person is not verbose, and does not talk only superfluous things, talks profound, profound things, but talks a little more as a human being. So the same human being, when as a teacher will enter the class, will speak a bit more, no problem. If you have seen a teacher who speaks less and is highly effective as a teacher, don't try to imitate that I should also start speaking less. And if you see that one teacher who speaks a little more and approaches the subject from many angles. Sometimes overlapping is there, but he makes the things very clearly clear. That person has capacity to explain one thing in five different ways. And you speak less by nature. Don't try to imitate. Learn that, yes, that, that is also a way of becoming effective. So here, nobody can exactly give you the right framework to, to which style you can, can become effective teacher. Here you have to appoint a teacher within yourself who will teach yourself what is your way of effect becoming effective teacher. And here I'll propose as many teachers, as many effective style of teaching. But if we say that we will not be able to have a framework. So I'll say there are three types of, there are three ways in which you and I may be effective teacher. We have to find our own way. Way number one, Way number two, way number three, very briefly I'm saying. Way number one, my basic style may be called as parent style. I'm taking this analogy from parent, adult, and child ego framework of transactional analysis. Parent style of teaching. Parent style of teaching does not mean behaving like a parent or very, very hard taskmaster. 
Parent means basically maintaining a psychological distance from the students. You as a teacher are standing here, the students are also here. Yeah, I'm not saying that students are lower than you, but maintaining a psychological distance. You talk sense in the class whenever you go. You are fairly serious, but still you are fairly approachable also. And when students attend your classes, it is a feast of learning for them. And students appreciate you. We may call it parent style of teacher. Students, uh, 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 sorry, uh, anyone uh, loves his or her parents? You will be also loved if you have parent style of teaching. There's one style of becoming effective teacher. Remaining in your own dignity, of course, maintaining certain self distance, keeping students disciplined, maintaining your flow, means you are perceived as a very high, very effective teacher. Of course, all three are effective teachers, I'm saying. Three teachers I'm describing, all three are effective, but way of becoming effective is different. So parent style of becoming effective, I think I have made my point clear. Second style is adult style of becoming effective teacher. Adult style. And adult style is that I treat myself as an adult, grown up adult, of course we are. <laughs> and each of my student is a grown up adult and I respect that adult at equal front, at, 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 at equal level means I have a respect for that individual who is a BBA student in my class. And then my discussion, my style would be friendly. Friendly does not mean that you start bringing students too close, that they are putting their hands on your shoulder. That is not friendly. Friendly means students do not feel that they are with teacher. They feel that they are with friend, philosopher and guide. Some, someone of his own or her own is in the class. Because distance is minimized. And you treat students as a, as a mind, not as just merely he is my student. Why I should ask him to sit down in front of me when he comes to my chamber? No. If he has, he has come, I treat him with equal respect. And in the classroom also it is reflected that question is asked. Assertiveness, of course, is um, uh, uh, followed as a teacher from my side, but I'm free and frank with the student. And we generate ideas through mutual discussion and debate. Like parent style teaching, I'm not telling them what is right. In adult style of teaching, I'm asking, is it right? For example, parent style of teacher will say that capital of Bihar state in India is Patna. This is, and it's a very relevant information. If one does not know, we'll know now. This parent style of teaching. But adult style of teaching would say, to ask, what do you think? Where is capital of Bihar? Now, the student is thinking, is it, uh, is it Patna? And then you say, because you have watched the body language of the student, he's asking you now, sir, is it Patna? Then you say, are you sure? You, you, have start, you have started playing devil's advocate. And then he says, sir, I think it is Patna. Then you may counter question. It does not depend on your thinking, which is what is capital of Bihar. Be clear about it. So, sir, it is Patna. Sure, I'm sure it is Patna. Fine. So and it is a bit little time taking, but the momentum between the teacher and student is more. This adult style of teacher. Third is child ego based teacher. And very difficult to become a child uh, ego based effective teacher. Child ego based effective teacher is very, very approachable. The person is just like your friend. Of course, you cannot take liberty from this teacher. Teacher knows discipline, but teacher is humorous. He puts humor into the subject. He might start with certain small anecdote, certain analogy, certain incidents. For example, one of our teachers of physics, even in class 10th, when I was a school student, he had a different style. Those days, there was no internet and everything was not available with the students. 
some special things used to be available only to teachers but from where he used to manage i do not know if you teach about a scientist suppose the name of scientist is newton from somewhere he will bring a picture of newton it was not very clear some photocopy i don't know from where and he used to show the face of newton face of lavoisier face of einstein now he played very well and then he would say for 2 3 minutes about life of einstein about life of newton and you get connected to newton and then you start thinking oh newton's uh, third law second law first law something like that you got to start with uh, here is newton's three laws you would see the face of newton he was a gentleman human being he studied at cambridge and during a you know today is corona is going on as many of you may be knowing corona is going on and we are feeling that our creativity is getting stuck but i'm telling you a very quick story in 30 seconds newton was a student in cambridge and that time pandemic a pandemic plague was creating havoc in england universities were closed is towards the push to their native places and newton went to join his mother and the village of newton is close to the place called leeds in london in, in england so he went there and there actually while sitting in a pensive mood at one point of time he saw an apple falling from a tree or he saw a, an apple which was already fallen on the earth means pandemic led, led to a situation to help newton to observe a fallen apple and had there been no pandemic and no <laughs> off from the college he might not have seen an apple falling from the tree anyway what i'm saying is that such a story connects you with newton brings you at a level of inquisitiveness you see child ego based teacher to become that is most difficult don't go by the word child ego based because child ego based teacher will make merriment with the process of dissemination of knowledge ye teacher aisa hota hai ki woh class mein jayega to log the, the, the students will know the complex concept the students will be clear about that complex concept but they will feel i was watching a beautiful or very very capturing cinema or it was a, an experience of uh, joy it was a playful manner of uh, receiving something so the teacher here is child like of course not childish and in a very playful manner cutting jokes across of course relevant jokes only not trying to become zany or buffoon or 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 or, or very uh, let's say a person uh, with uh, as laughing stock but person has very very serious sense of humor and let me tell you my dear friends if you have sense of humor it will add value to becoming effective teacher but let me tell you that developing sense of humor is a very serious business to develop sense of humor is not child's play sense of humor develops when you become deep observer in your life and then you start getting a sparkling from difficult moments difficult phase of life also and you find reason to smile and laugh of course at yourself you should never laugh at others <clears throat> sense of humor has two or three indicators number one person with sense of humor is capable of laughing at oneself he or she never laughs at at others person with sense of humor only laugh with others not at others and person with sense of humor is capable of smiling in most difficult phase of life also so sense of humor child ego based teacher so second point i will end by saying please you can be effective teacher in your own way only find that originality it is better to be original person with little defects here and there compared to becoming a perfectly typed eighth carbon copy i am a perfectly typed eighth carbon copy for me it is better than it is to become 
original copy, maybe with one or two minor mistakes. Human being should try to be perfect, but should not be obsessed with perfection. Sanskrit quote says, Ati Sarvatra Varjayet. Don't go to a class without preparation. Don't be a shabby teacher, shabby writer, shabby thinker. Do your best, but don't think that unless I have the best thing in my mind, I will not go to class, I will not write. So try to become perfect, but don't be obsessed with perfection. Otherwise, we start suffering with a disease, which is called perfectionism disease. Perfectionism and they become obsessed. Sometimes they become uh, paranoid also. Those who uh, have tendency to be captured by perfectionism. So second point I have covered. Be effective teacher in your own way. Come to third point. To become effective teacher, understand your students. Because the students are of different kinds. In your class, let us say when, um, roughly of 50 students, 50 students are of different 50, not exactly 50, but maybe five or six or seven different types of mental framework. And to become effective with everyone, you have to have varieties in your personality as a teacher. Otherwise, on average, if you are perceived as effective teacher, out of 50 students who attend your classes, 40 would say you are effective, 10 may not say you are effective. It means for those 10, I am doing nothing. I'm not saying that teachers should ever try to please students. Teachers should never work for getting good feedback from a student. Teachers should become good teachers and feedback is a byproduct. Do not try to get good feedback. Just do your work and feedback will follow you as shadow follows you when you keep working. So we should not, our behavior, our conduct, our character should not be feedback oriented. They should give me good feedback. Don't waste your time in all these things. Do your work. But if every time out of 50, 40 are saying that you are good and 10 are saying you are below average, it means you have not understood those 10 students pattern of learning and you have not put any effort and then you are feeling that I'm satisfied because out of 50, 40 says, 40 say that I'm effective, but you should not uh, stop bothering for those 10. I'll tell you a few things. There are different types of learners. Example, or where is the framework? Number one, some students like conceptual framework based discussion. Some students like examples. Some students like concrete examples. Some students like abstractness. Some students like thinking oriented discussion. Some students like feeling oriented Similarly, generally when you are a student at very introductory level of economics, we learn that economics is of two kinds. The study of economics is of two kinds, positive economics and normative economics. Positive economics deals with what is and normative deals with what should be. Similarly, some of your students, they more like positive discussion, discussion about reality, what is the percentage of, let us say, dishonest person in a particular type of industry? Where is the survey? What is the data? They would like to know about it. Some persons like this kind of positive here means not, which is negative to negative. Positive here means what is the reality? Normative is what should be. Some students would not like only to be taught what is the dishonesty index of India? They would raise this question, what we are doing to make our society more honest? They are more towards normative dimension. But some students do not like normative dimension. What should be done? They would say, let us discuss the reality. What is? So some students are reality oriented. Some students are what should be oriented. Some students are 
skill oriented some students are values oriented now we start scratching our head what to do our 50 students are of different five types some have column one characteristics of these five some have column two characteristics of these five oh my god what i should do then i would say it is dharma of teacher to make best effort to reach to each individual student of course in the classroom we teach a group and we may claim that i don't have time to address to one individual student but i would like to say please don't claim that you don't have time of course you don't waste time only addressing to one particular type of students or one particular student reach to all the students and i'll say you the way how to do it of course this way you have to evolve yourself and there is no cut and dried method in time series analysis and statistics you may be knowing line of best fit when we take x axis and y axis x axis years and y axis production of any particular product then we have various dots in the first quadrant of two dimensional quadrant geometry and then we have to draw a line of best fit which represents the trend of the dots whether dots are in general increasing going in north east direction north east direction of the curve of of the graph or it is constant means parallel to x axis or the trend is falling to cut the story short in time series analysis we go for drawing line of best fit and line of best fit is a representative line of the trend of all the dots similarly as a teacher you have to have that line of best fit depending on the nature of my students how much time in what way i should give theoretical proposition what i should think as an example so that example oriented students are also satisfied concept because some persons are concept loving and some are evidence seeking and you have to address to both and as a teacher if you only like to explain concept and no evidence then only you will be liked by those students now your purpose is not to be liked by student but still you should satisfy the needs of each student line of best fit and here i'll give you a thumb rule formula if you agree otherwise you can always revise it understanding your framework mental framework what is the average level of students invest your 60% energy time in the class to address that level 20% time you should devote for those who are very good students ahead of average level 20% time but while addressing in this 20% time you should not forget that some laggards are also there you should actually pull them through attracting them to deeper discussion which will satisfy the need of 20% excellent students and will also give an invitation to laggards to come to that level and 20% time in the classroom you should give or 15% only and sometimes i'll say only 10% time you should give to especially to those students who are laggard means suddenly you know um, there is air dip and an aeroplane while flying suddenly comes lower so sometime you should suddenly come to that level of those 10% students who are laggard but 10% time 15% time don't give much time there because you can always arrange a special tutorial for those who are laggards and sometime you should also go for a special tutorial for those who are looking forward or higher level of discussion because like different types of teachers there are different types of students hmm. sometimes i say humorously that there are three types of teachers number one those who do not cover the syllabus number two those who cover the syllabus and number three those who uncover the syllabus anyone in our audience is not a first category that does not cover the syllabus many of us may be second category we cover the syllabus 
but we have to jump to third level. We should not only cover the syllabus, we should uncover the syllabus. Covering syllabus is like giving water to a thirsty person. And uncovering syllabus is showing the source of water for whole life to thirsty persons. Similarly, there are different types of students, three types of students. One who do not study their syllabus, anyhow try to pass out the exam. Second, they cover the syllabus, they want to do well in the exam. CGPA percentage they want to manage well so that eligibility criteria is not affected when they have to face placement interviews because placement a committee may say that if you don't have this much percentage, that industry will not invite you for an interaction. Second type of students. But third type of students, like third type of teachers, they would like to explore further. And you can play the role of guru there. So there can be some special tutorial for such students also if you identify them, call them. So you should keep eyes on all types of students because there are different types of students. So we have discussed till now three things, two directly, one indirectly. In <clears throat> case of higher level teaching, we have to go for participant centered learning, number one. Number two, there are different type of teachers and I have to find my own way in what way I can be effective. Number three, there are different types of students and it is my challenge how to draw a line of best fit. And especially let me tell you, what is difference between teaching MSc chemistry students or MA Hindi, MA English, MA political science, MSc physics? What is difference teaching such students compared to teaching MBA classes, you have a special challenge. Why? Because if you are a teacher of MS, I'm not saying I'm teaching MSc chemistry is easy or more easy or less easy. But at least when I'm a teacher of MSc physics, I know all my students have done BSc honors in physics. Level is well defined. Things are predictable. But when you're MBA level teacher and typically MBA is such a degree which gives invitation to any type of graduate student. You may be graduate in fine arts, you may be graduate in history, you may be graduate in electronics engineering, you may be graduate in physics, you may be graduate in home science, you may be gra graduate in political science, you may be graduate in business administration. Now, in your PG classes of MBA, your students from all faculty are here. Some may be chartered accountant, some may be doctors, some may be engineers. And if some are chartered accountants and you are teaching, let us say, management accounting, financial accounting, from where to begin? Because some of your students who are engineering graduates only know the spelling of accounting. They do not know anything about that. But other students in the same class who is chartered accountant, he knows A to Z of accounting. How to begin? So your class must take into account the needs of chartered accountants. You must tell to chartered accountants directly and indirectly that attending this class is important for you because what we are here teaching is not chartered accountancy. Here we are teaching financial management and basically in that field, how chartered accountancy can also be utilized. So there should be some material for chartered accountants also, and there should be certainly some significant material for those who are who have never studied accountancy because the student may be physics honors student or maybe history honors student. So this third thing I discussed. Now let me tell you, especially in management teaching, we go by case study method. And case study method, <clears throat> purpose is to explore the issue. Rather dumping knowledge on the mind of the students you want to explore the issue and you want to help the students to do decision making themselves. So you have to start opening the petals of their personality. And when case is there, suppose a case of one page you have given, just quickly, two minutes, then I'll go for question answer. A case you have given, ask the students, 
summarize this case. What is this case about? One minute summary. Other students may be invited if they have not started generating ideas. Somewhere you have to intervene and somewhere you have to play the role from behind the curtain. Okay, tell me the central point of this issue. Because no case is only addressing one question. Any case is actually getting bothered by many questions. But what is the question? What is the question? What is the epicenter? And then which are the subsidiary points? Then think about how to approach towards this. Who will approach towards this solution? When to approach towards this solution? I'll tell you one quote from Rudyard Kipling. And Rudyard Kipling said that I keep six honest serving men. They taught me all I know. Their names are what and why and when and how and where and who. So explore and explode the case by bombarding students with some questions and speak less. Bombard, receive back. Let them discuss. Then again, when you find that discussion is stuck, again, bombard with other dimension. Sometimes what dimension, sometimes why dimension, sometimes who dimension, sometimes when dimension, sometimes where dimension, etc. Again, sometimes you may come with some other framework of bombarding. Let us say you may ask them, okay, what, what is the outcome that you do based on the history of the functioning of this organization? where it was, where it is, where it is leading towards, and is that direction correct? If not correct, what kind of diversification it should do? Means you are actually smashing the various possibilities of the theme, and in that process, you are challenging the fixated mind of the students, and you are making the minds of the students as if you are converting an ice to a flowing stream. You can also put other framework of questioning because when you intervene in case analysis, actually you are making the mind of students fertile. Use other framework. What are the advantages of this um, project A and what are the disadvantages? Similarly, alternative choices project B. What are the advantages? What are the advantages? This is the third framework. Other framework but that, uh, that is very popular called SWOT analysis. You may be using it. What is strength, weakness, um, and, and, and opportunities and threats? Strength and opportunities are internal, and weakness and uh, sorry, strength and weakness are internal, and opportunity and threats are external. Strength and opportunities are positive, weakness and threats are negative. So, you have to actually keep challenging. But while challenging the students, please remember, you must be very respectful to students. While teaching the students, while challenging them, where while while playing devil's advocate with them, we should not. Treat them as if they are one stage below us. Give them full respect, but keep challenging. And you will find that by as a byproduct, you develop great acceptability by your students. And as a byproduct of that, you start enjoying your life. Because once you have decided to become a teacher, and when you get, let us say, good vibrations around, and you are recognized as a good teacher, you feel that uh, I'm worthily living and contributing to a given cause. I think Haryanand Hari Katha Ananta and how to become effective teacher can go on and on. There can be a whole day workshop or there can be three days workshop on it. So I stop here and I think that uh, by giving this time to uh, me for interaction, uh, some useful uh, ideas will be generated, sprouted out and I'm open for some questions. And I, I know that time is limited. So straight, let us go for some questions. So thank you, uh, Shweta ji. I stop here and then uh, okay. time is yours. Okay, thank you, sir. Uh, being the faculty member, the first question that arises in our mind is uh, about uh, the involvement of the students. So if you can suggest some ways through which we can increase the involvement of the students in uh, teaching related activities, sir. Fine. My answers will be very, very telegraphic so that I can respond to okay. some more questions. <clears throat> Already I've answered this question. Give them reading yes, material in advance. Ask them to read and come prepared in the classroom. If sometimes they do not come politely, ask them to go out of the class also just for demonstration effect so that they do not take it lightly. And this is number one. 
Number two, when you will start working towards becoming yourself effective teacher, they will start finding juice in this process of learning. You see, there are many students who look forward to enter into class of certain professor. And there are some students who look forward to run away from the class of a professor like me, maybe. The question <laughs> is that you have to take the responsibilities in your own hands and try to bring students at your level. Shastro mein likha hua hai. There are three types of teachers in Sanskrit. Uttam, Madhyam, Adham. And all three teachers are very effective teachers. They are a storehouse of knowledge. Dissemination power is there. Communication skill is there. Concept clarity they do in the class. But still, this is not a differentiator. Differentiator is different. Shastra says, there are three types of teachers. Uttam, Madhyam, Adham. Adham teachers are those who are very effective teachers but would never like that students should come to their level of understanding. Madhyam teachers are those middle level who always wish that a student should come at par with them. And Uttam teachers are those who are preparing for students to become more excellent than the teacher himself. All three are effective, pedagogy wise, but see the intention and attitude. So we have to also work on ourselves. We are also a laboratory. I am a teacher. I am a. I have a school inside me. I am my own teacher. I am my own student. So one couplet says, "Mai bhi tu, mina bhi tu, saaki bhi tu, mafil bhi tu." You are the teacher of yourself. You are the students of yourself. You are the institution within yourself. थोड़ी मेहनत करनी पड़ेगी मेरे ख्याल से श्वेता जी. That's all. Yes, sir. Okay. Sir, another question is uh, how to motivate students to be very curious in the class. What we can do uh, to make them more curious? You see, curiosity can be it, curiosity is the product of the functionality of creativity of the teacher. Let me show an example to you with your permission. Suppose in, yes, in trigonometry, I want to teach what is tan theta. Then theta is equal to perpendicular, this, this perpendicular by base. Then theta, and then forty-five is equal to one, because why? Because perpendicular size and the base length is same. So five divided by five is one. So I want to teach then theta. I'm going to teach it. How to develop curiosity? Curiosity can be developed when whatever you are teaching. can be connected to the life around them an example is aap 10 theta padha rahe hain tell to student i'm just taking an example that tell to student a story that suppose you are walking before qutub minar with a stick in hand which is 6 feet long and your height is also 6 feet you're just watching a uh, walking in front of qutub minar with that stick and wondering how i can have good estimate of height of qutub minar how you will do it then i will suggest leading the mind of the students saying that if i if i come away from qutub minar at a certain distance from where the elevated angle is about 45 degree the tip of the qutub minar top so when the angle is 45 and 10:45 is equal to 1 then it means at whatever point i am standing in front of qutub minar my distance from qutub minar is height of qutub minar because if base is equal to perpendicular 10:45 will become 1 so i will go to a distance from the base of qutub minar making 45 degree angle when i have a vision at least some estimate of 45 and then i have a stick of 6 feet long i measured the dis distance from myself and qutub minar and that distance is the height of qutub minar you have actually created a visionary picture so two points i will say if you can paint a visionary picture before them aap shabdon se chitra bana sake you can do verbal painting out of words and secondly when you can connect anything to life because any knowledge that you are discussing either physics or chemistry or mathematics or management 
or psychology. They are concerned with life. I think two points. Thank you. Okay. Uh, so next question is, uh, when we are teaching in the class, how we can assess the understanding level of the students that whatever we are teaching to them, they are understanding or not? Because there are several cases, uh, if they are not understanding also, they are saying yes ma'am, yes ma'am and uh, so on. So how we can assess them? Just two simple That whatever tips. we are teaching, they are getting. Simple tips. I'm not saying that keep doing this and keep doing that. Naturally, you should evolve your style. But you see, there is a concept called kinesthetics. Kinesthetics means, especially in the face-to-face -face class, when you approach to a student and without becoming aggressive on him and too close, because too closeness creates threatening posture. But at a certain distance, you go, lean forward, have eye-to-eye -eye contact with the student and ask, are you with us? Have you understood? Can you recapitulate? So first point is kinesthetics. Approach politely, ask. Number two, time to time, ask for recapitulation. Recapitulation means answering in your own language. What I have answered as a teacher, don't use my words. In your own words, tell what you have understood. Recapitulation, time to time. Then third is time to time reinforcement. Because teachers who keep teaching in a flow without certain degree of overlapping, only intelligent students can follow. But you have to take all the students together. So somewhere, what is called coupling. In coupling, there is some overlapping. So sometime you should also repeat. For example, after 15 minutes, you should say, let us summarize in half minute or one minute what we have understood in last 15 minutes. And if you are teaching in ISM, like institution, don't summarize yourself, ask someone to summarize. And be a good student yourself of body language, because if a student says, if you ask, have you understood? And a student says, uh, 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 yes, ma'am, uh, uh, I have understood. And you should say, your language is saying you have understood, but your paralanguage and body language is saying you have not understood. Forget your hesitation and ask. So we have to engage with the students. That is important. Thank you. You are not audible, oh. Sitaji. Any other question? Sir. So, sir, now I'm audible. Uh, now you're audible. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Uh, sir, uh, our last question is, uh, sir, in the class we can see uh, several kinds of students as you have also mentioned in your session. Ki, uh, Madam, 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 be, be a bit slow. I, I missed your first few words. Please, please. Tell sir, me. Uh, okay. Sir, uh, when we are taking class or when we use, when we use to take classes, so there are several kinds of students. Means a diverse background we can find in the class. So uh, some students are notorious, some students are very disciplined and they're very sincere towards their studies. So how we can shape a positive learning environment in the class where we can involve those kind of students who are not very disciplined or who are not very sincere towards their studies along with the students who are very sincere. <clears throat> Thank you. Just behave as parents behave with different children in the house. Parents with multiple children means more than one child. Two children of parents. Why are bringing parents? Because parents love both the children. Either one child is self-disciplined or notorious. Similarly, as a teacher, you have to love your student who is notorious and also love who is self-disciplined. But behavior of parents towards these two children will be different. Katana ki buddhiman ko ishara kafi hai. A simple, subtle signal to a person of deeper understanding is enough. But sometime to a person who does not understand your subtle language, you have to speak the full sentence. Tulsi Das ne kaha hai ki khag jane, khag hi ki bhasha. Some ill-disciplined persons do not understand your dignified knowledge. But as a teacher, you have to still love that student. And you have to also um, practice equanimity. Some bhao bhi hona hai. Some drishti bhi honi hai. So 
So let me, Shweta Ji, just describe what is Samabhav and Samdristi, and we will all perhaps enjoy and understand. Samabhav and Samdristi is not about equal treatment to all. It is not about absolute equal treatment to all. It is about equal proportional treatment to all. Samanupatik barabari chahiye. Taraju ke wajan mein barabari nahi ki 5 kilo usko behave kiya to 5 kilo isko. Samanupatik. It means a self-disciplined child in the home or a self-disciplined child in the student in the classroom. Subtle signal enough, but one who is ill-disciplined or maybe rogue has to be treated well accordingly because not punishing and this is for educational administrators also not punishing an indiscipline not punishing an indisciplined student is deterrent demotivation to those who are self-disciplined same thing happens in organization also if ill-disciplined are not punished self-disciplined get demotivated that what kind of organization i'm working with that ill-disciplined are making merriment and self-disciplined are suffering so you have to give signal and you have to give clear message to the students thank you okay thank you sir and uh, we are very privileged to have you at uh, ism patna for such a fabulous session so I thank all the I, participants. I, I only wish that it should not have been Corona, and I would have been addressing you actually being physically in, in ISM Patna. And uh, yes, sir. in the evening, I could have seen the waves of Ganges there, partly Putra. But anyway, <laughs> I enjoyed this. Yes, please, Shweta Ji, sorry I disturbed you. No, sir. We, we also want that you, if you can visit our campus, it will be a great honor for us. And uh, we are going to proceed for that, if you permit us. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, sir. Okay. Uh, I also thank all the participants who have attended this session very patiently and uh, hope they can execute all the ways that sir have suggested to improve their teaching pedagogy. Uh, my sincere thanks to the management of ISM Patna for providing us the platform to organize such kind of effect effective events. Last but not the least, I thank Pooja ma'am for her sincere effort in organizing such events and also Abhimanyu sir for, effective coordinating, for effectively coordinating the event, along with all the faculty members and uh, the ISM team. Thank you everyone for such a great support. Thank you, sir, once again. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you all.